Hey everyone, this is Alvaro, the bird guy, um, with one of these questions that affects most birders in most of the North American continent and, and extending to South America. Yellowlegs, which one is it? Lesser or greater? So we do have two kinds of yellowlegs, right? Greater yellowlegs is bigger, lesser yellowlegs is smaller. Um, and that would seem to be really obvious and easy to do. Truth is often yellow legs are alone or sometimes they're in small little flocks, two or three of them of the same species. So then you get, um, you don't get the benefit of actually comparing the lesser and the greater together in a way that you can sort of say, aha, that one's clearly bigger, it's gotta be a greater. Um, you can use sometimes other reference species, you know, like uh, dowagers, killdeers, you know, various other things to, to uh, help you identify which yellow legs you're looking at. Um, but I'm going to try to show you here features on on the structure of these birds to help you identify them because unlike most birds in North America, um, there's not anything we can look at in the plumage to separate a greater and a yellow legs. Most of the time birders essentially ignore the plumage um, when identifying these trying to separate these two species. Overall, yellow eggs are medium sized to largest shorebirds. They have these really long yellow legs, so they re that's a good name. And they, they're generally long, you know, long necked. Um, and uh, they, um, they're common throughout, throughout US and Canada and further south, all the way down to Chile and Argentina. In flight, you know, they lack any wing stripes like a lot of shorebirds have. So that's a real sort of solid looking wing. Um, a lot of your attention might go to the rump and tail where there's a white base to the tail, white rump, and actually a barred tail that in the distance looks grayish. Because they have really long legs, the feet stick out beyond the tail. So that's something useful to look at. There's a lot of shorebirds where the feet do not stick beyond out beyond the tail and those would be shorter legged species. In flight, they are hard to identify other than the fact that they call. And when they're calling, um, their call notes are, are useful for identification. I'll talk about that a little later. So here are the lesser and greater yellow legs with, with a friend. That's the lesser yellow legs. That's the greater, quite a bit bigger, even uh, though you can't see the legs, you see a bulkier bird. In fact, you know, they weigh quite a bit more than, than the lesser. And a stilt sandpiper in there for comparison, stilt sandpiper is closer in size to the lesser yellow legs as would be a dowager. That dow any, either one of the two dowagers would look more similar in size to a lesser yellow legs than they would look to um, a greater yellow legs. So um, having some reference species sometimes can help, but you know, the truth is you don't need a reference species. You can actually look at other features on the birds to help you identify them. Here they are, greater yellow legs on the left and lesser on the right. Um, bill lengths are important and relative bill lengths. I'll also point, you, point out that um, the greater yellow legs has a a long neck that it sort of holds a bit like a it's swan S curve. So it, it has a bulge on the neck. And then on the back of the neck and and the back, that angle is just more prominent than it generally is on lesser yellow legs. Lesser yellow legs will often hold the neck extended and they have a shorter relative neck. So you don't see sort of this neck bulge down here. And the angle between the back of the neck and back is, is different, not as, as prominent as on, on the greater yellow legs. But key is to look at the bill. Also, the, the bill is thicker on greater yellow legs and that thicker bill will is often pale in color, like a grayish green or grayish. And the nostril will sometimes just stand out prominently on a greater yellow legs, while most of the time lesser yellow legs have dark bills.
Okay, so now we're going to look at the relative bill length. If we were to take from, from the base of the bill to the tip, make a line, and then we're going to compare that to the length of the head, this is what would happen. You see, the bill length compared to the head is actually longer than the head length so that if you take from the base of the bill to the tip take that distance and put it out back almost like if you bent the bill back you know behind the head which is kind of a ugly thought it it juts out a substantial amount beyond the back of the head because that bill is longer than the head length and you know it's about a quarter uh, distance um, that that it uh, extends beyond the the head. Now we're going to do the same thing with the lesser yellow legs. We're going to take that bill length. Now we're going to extend it back beyond to the back of the head from the base of the bill. Aha! Look at that. So now you have a situation where the bill length is about the same length as the head on a lesser. We compare that to the greater where the bill is quite a bit longer. So you have the relative bill length, you've got the relative width of the bill, thickness I would should say, the fact that greater tends to have a paler base bill, and then this difference in the neck bulge, and you have multiple features that you can look at uh, when separating these two species. I'll just point out that Lesser also often has a steeper forehead and sometimes kind of a flat crown look like this, that um, is not always there, but when it is, it's actually distinctive looking. So that's another feature that works sometimes, steeper forehead on lesser yellow legs. This is um, a painting by Peter Burke uh, that um, for an upcoming book on, on one of the countries in South America. And um, look at the lesser yellow legs here on the left and then the greater yellow legs on the right. You can see that the relative uh, length of bills, the paleness of the bill is there on the greater, the bulge of the neck is in there versus the sort of the more shallow or I mean just sort of even curve of the neck and breast of lesser. The way that it, lessers will look like they're holding their head and neck more extended, the slightly different angle on the back of the head and the neck and, and back, the steeper forehead, of the lesser yellow legs compared to greater yellow legs. And then um, finally down here, these two birds are in breeding plumage. So this would be in the late, you know, boreal spring to summer. Um, lesser yellow legs, if you look at the flanks, they have very little to no flank barring when breeding, but greater yellow legs actually have a substantial amount of flank barring. And this is the one time one plumage in the entire year cycle where you can separate lesser and greater yellow legs based on plumage. You do need a little bit of experience just to assess what how much is enough barring, um, but because uh, lessers do have some barring in, this, in the breeding plumage, but uh, it's the one time where they actually differ. And it's, it's, it's actually really amazing that these two species look so much alike, because in fact, genetically, if we look at the their genetic relationships, they're not each other's closest relatives. So here is a yellow leg. So you can see the yellow legs, it's sort of generally grayish brown upper parts, that funny face pattern with the eye ring and the connection of white to you know the, the bill. So then you say, oh, which one is it? Well, look at the bill. First of all, you're already kind of tuned into looking for the color, but if we were to take this bill length extended beyond it would probably poke out till about there so that's a longer bill than the head that's a greater yellow legs secondary characteristic that real greenish base obvious nostril another secondary characteristic a little bulge here on the neck so we have three features helping us identify this as a greater yellow legs Ta -da! we were right look at that it works Now lesser yellow legs right here. And look at this situation here, the bill lengths going to the back about the same length as the head, dark bill base, no bulge at the neck, 
steeper forehead with that flat crown. Everything about this bird is lesser yellow legs and you have multiple features to look at there to identify this individual. Isn't that cool? Obviously in the field, it's not always like this. And I would suggest that if you're a, a birder photographer, sometimes taking a photograph, holding onto it, um, identifying the bird in the field through binoculars or scope, you know, really drilling down on it, saying, yes, this is a lesser yellow eggs, and then taking your photographs and blowing them up and actually looking for these features in detail to, to see if you were right or wrong is a great way to learn. So use, use your photographs as a way to, um, in the field, assess whether you're getting these things right. Here's uh, two lesser yellow legs. They look quite different in plumage because they are in different plumages. This one is a non-breeding bird. This one is a breeding plumage here on the right. So the non-breeding one will look more grayish brown. And um, look at that bill, bill length. It's about the same size as the head from the base. Not much going on here in terms of bulge. Um, darkness of the bill again, relatively short bill comparing to the head and um, we're not seeing any bulge in there. It's just some fluff feathers. This individual is in breeding plumage, so it has a bit of barring on the flanks, but quite a bit less than a greater yellow legs would show. Two different plumages of greater yellow legs. And look at this, this guy here on the left, a juvenile. Bulge on the neck and that sort of more prominent angle between the back and, and the neck. Obviously pale base to that thicker bill and you take from the base to the tip, put it out back and it goes well beyond the back of the head. So that's a classic greater yellow leg structure. This one's a little harder to assess the way it's feeding, but it's a long billed bird. You can see that there. Um, you can even see the neck bulge here and then this one is in breeding plumage. Look how wide and thick those bars are on the flanks. Almost looks like a willet in breeding plumage. And um, well, willet is one of their relatives, so that's not that unusual. But when people see greater yellow eggs in breeding plumage like this, um, sometimes they're surprised because it doesn't, it looks much more marbled and barred and funny looking compared to the average yellow legs you see in the fall and winter. But that density of barring in the breeding plumage is the one feature you can use that's a, a plumage feature that separates it from lesser yellow legs, just for a tiny bit of the year that you can use that. Voice, very helpful. The, the actual notes are similar between lesser and greater yellow legs, um, but lesser yellow legs tends to give one note or two, greater yellow legs, usually three, sometimes four, when they and they do these calls mostly when they fly there's a slight quality difference in them i think of the lesser sounding a little weaker a greater yellow like sound sounding a little throatier deeper um something about it is just richer i should say rather than deeper and um listen to them and um and uh, hopefully the differences will be will be clear here's the lesser yellow legs Greater yellow legs. So when they're together, um, the differences are obvious. I mean, lesser yellow legs is a substantially smaller bird down here than the greater yellow legs up here. You you can see structural differences like the, the bulge on the neck on the greater and the more even curve of the neck on the lesser. And then you look at the bill coloration to start with. Maybe that might be even more obvious than the length, but then just do the exercise of taking that bill from base to tip. It goes back beyond the head and base to tip. It's about the same length as the head here. And again, in these, you know, non-breeding type yellow legs, not, nothing you can look for in, in the uh, plumage. 
So it's all about structure of the head, neck, and bill. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got some new information from, from it. If you've never heard about that bulge in the neck and the angles of the back of the head, it's well, it's because it's not in the books. And uh, I'm glad I was able to offer something new and insightful to for you to listen to. Um, go and check out alvarosadventures.com where we um, mention some of the tours that we have coming up next year. But also go down to the bottom of any one of the pages and you can sign up for our uh, mailing list where we can inform you of other things such as webinars, um, classes, and various other activities that are not tours as well. So uh, please do that if you were interested by this topic today. There's many more we can talk about in the future. Thank you.